All right, hello everyone. Again, welcome. We're super excited to talk to you about our third summer orientation series, which is all about move in, what to pack, what to bring, and anything that might pop up for you in terms of a question about your arrival to campus. So super excited to be with you in this virtual space and to talk about an exciting date that's coming up in about just about a month. So before we get started, uh, we are going to go ahead and do some quick introductions so you all know who we are, uh, for those of you who haven't been at the first or second orientation sessions. So I'll go ahead and go first. My name is Tyler Murphy. I use he, him pronouns, and I serve as the Assistant Director of Housing Operations in our central office. <clears throat> so I oversee our housing portal, and I oversee all of our general occupancy management on campus, including all of the freshman assignments that were released a couple weeks ago. So again, super excited to be here, and I'll pass it over to Tim. Hi, my name is Tim Albert. I'm Associate Director of Housing, and I've been uh, currently at Seattle University since 2005. However, I actually went here for my undergraduate and my graduate, along with all of all four of my brothers went here to Seattle University also. Uh, so that's just a little bit about me. I kind of oversee uh, all housing operations and services uh, in our department. And I will pass it over to Caitlin. Hi, everyone. I'm Caitlin, or orientation leader Caitlin, if you want to call me that. And I am a rising sophomore in our College of Arts and Sciences as a public affairs major. My hometown is from the SF Bay area, and I'm super happy to be here to talk about my experience last year living in our residence halls. All right, and I will take us home. Hi everyone, my name is Katie DeBrigny. I use she, her, or they, them pronouns. You can use either one for me. And I serve as the area coordinator for Campion Hall. And an area coordinator is the one who oversees the building, supervises the resident assistants. We, um, we, we oversee the community. I'll hand it back to Tyler. Great, thank you so much, Katie. All right, so to give you all an overview of what we will be talking about today, we can move forward with the PowerPoint. All right, so this is what we hope in terms of learning outcomes for you all to know a little bit more about the move-in experience and move-in day, move-in weekend. Uh, we're gonna give you a quick overview of our first year community. So now that you all know where you're going to live, uh, you know who your roommates are, you know the buildings, maybe you've had a chance to look at, <laughs> excuse me, our website to dig a little bit deeper into what your community is gonna look like. But if you haven't had a chance to do that, we're gonna do a quick overview of all of our first year and transfer communities. So you have an idea of what you're moving into. Uh, we'll be then talking about what we provide to you all, so furniture, services, other things that you should expect from us in terms of a service living on campus at Seattle University. But then we're going to flip the script a little bit and we'll talk about what you all should be bringing to campus and what, what you all will need to provide in terms of your uh, living, arra living arrangements, depending on where you'll be where you'll be living with us. And then we'll also be talking about some quick tips and ideas and things to keep in mind for a successful and smooth move-in process for you and your families and supporters. And if you have any questions throughout this presentation, we will work to try to answer them as a group here at the end of our presentation. So once that time comes, please feel free to unmute yourself, ask the question if you're comfortable doing that, and one of us will be able to answer. Uh, but if you're not comfortable speaking, that's totally fine. You can put that question in the chat box once we get to that point in our presentation. So this is pretty much what we'll be talking about today. So moving forward, uh, I'll be taking this first section, which is again, the overview of our first year communities. So you all have an idea of what living on campus looks like as a first year or a transfer student. So our first community is Campion Hall. So for those of you who are moving into Campion Hall, this is a picture of Campion. It is our tallest residence hall on campus, uh, sometimes referred to as the Campion Tower because they're, it's a 12 story building, um, as you can see in this picture. So 11 of the 12 floors are for occupancy for students. It's located on the, what we call, what we refer to as South Campus, which is just off of Broadway and Jefferson Street, for those of you who may be local, uh, that is where the residence hall is located. Uh, again, it is our tallest building. There are 12 floors. Uh, it is home to mostly first-year students with second-year sophomore students living at, towards the top of the building. So floors 9 to 12 are sophomore students or um, upperclassmen, I'm sorry, 
uh, freshmen or transfers who are coming in that might be a little bit older, like the 18, 19 year old range. Uh, and we have 21 resident assistants or RAs. And for those of you who are not familiar with what a resident assistant or RA is, they are students, student staff who live on the floors and are there to help engage students and build community and also help students to be resources in case you all might have any questions, concerns, fears, anything related to your transition to college. They're there to be an ear for you to, for them to listen and to help point you into the direction of any support you may need. Um, and again, to really build community within your floor, the building and across campus as well. Uh, some of the other things that are located within Campion Hall, it's not just a residence hall, although primarily it is. Uh, our Housing and Residence Life Central Office is located in Campion. Uh, the Cave, which is our on-campus convenience store where you're able to spend your um, dining dollars is located there as well. I do wanna be clear that if you are not a Campion resident, you are still able to access the Cave. It's not just for Campion residents. So you are able to access the Cave as a non-resident of Campion. Uh, we have something called the ballroom, which is a large event space that you might find yourself in if you're attending a certain event on campus. Uh, there's a chapel and there's also a multi-faith prayer room that you are welcome to use if you'd like to do so. So that's an overview of Campion Hall. Uh, a quick snapshot of the rooms within Campion Hall. So this is a standard double setup. Um, as you can see, you have your side of the room, the other person will have the other side of the room. It's pretty much a mirror image of each other when looking at the two sections. So uh, each student will get a wardrobe, each student will get a bed, there's a desk, a chair, there's a shelving unit that each of you will be able to, to use. And uh, the room does come with a micro fridge, microwave combination. It's a fridge, freezer, microwave, thing all in one bolted together. So you don't have to worry about bringing a micro fridge. And we ask that you please don't bring an extra one because uh, there is only one that is permitted in each room. And they're definitely spacious enough for both of you to share. But this is a quick, quick setup of what they look like. Uh, moving forward. So Bellarmine Hall, um, this is the second largest freshman, first year, mostly residential community on campus. It's located on what we refer to as main campus. It's off of 12th Avenue and East Columbia Street. Uh, one of the highlights in this building is we do have single standing ADA accessible bathrooms that are located here uh, that is available for use if you feel like that's something that you'll need in terms of an accommodation. Um, like Campion, it is home to mostly first year students with second year students occupying those higher floors or floor six and seven, or freshmen or transfer who are a little bit older, 18, 19, 20 year old range, uh, you, you likely have been placed on those floors as well. Um, attached to the Bellarmine Residence Hall is what we call the SU Super Copy Print Shop. This is where you can go to, um, if you have any mailing needs on campus, like you need to ship stuff, it kind of acts like a FedEx or UPS specific to Seattle University students. So that's cool. Um, it's also the location of the um, student ID card center. So if you lose your card, you have issues with your card, this is where you're gonna wanna go to ask questions or possibly get a new one, depending on the situation. But that office is located adjacent, connected to Bellarmine Hall. Uh, like Campion, there are resident assistants or RAs that are present. There's 12 total in Bellarmine Hall. And again, they're there to build community amongst you and other members of the floor and building, and also be there to troubleshoot in case you need any additional support or resources. Uh, located in or near Bellarmine Hall, we have the Bellarmine Advising Center. So any academic support uh, will be present there. The Student Health Center is off of the lobby located in Bellarmine on the first floor. We have the Student Center, which is next to Bellarmine Hall, and that's the main student location. The main dining hall is there. Um, other offices related to student development and other departments as well are located in the Student Center. And then the Lemieux Library, which is across from Bellarmine Hall, that is also adjacent to Bellarmine. I also do want to be um, just one, one little thing to clarify. So Bellarmine is located on what we do call main campus, as I've mentioned, but that's not to say that Campion and Xavier, once we get there, are far from main campus. Uh, relatively, when you're looking at Seattle University as a whole, nothing is more than like 10 to maybe 12 minutes walking distance from corner to corner. So when we say main campus, yes, Bellarmine is located centrally, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the other buildings are 
far from things like the Student Center and all of these other offices available to students. Um, and then quickly again, just as we showed you with Campion, Bellarmine Hall, the standard setup of a double room, this is what this is what you'd be looking at. It's essentially, it is the same thing as a Campion double, so you'll be seeing the same picture here. Moving forward, Xavier is our last uh, first year community uh, that we'll be touching on. And it's located on what we call North Campus since it's north of the rest of campus. Uh, this year, it's home to all first year students. So there is no split between first year sophomores, upperclassmen. The entire community is a first year experience, which is something that we're doing for the first time this year. So we're very excited to pilot that. So if you're living in Xavier Hall, everybody will be having the similar same experience for move in and living uh, as everyone else in the building. So super excited about that for all of you living in Xavier. Uh, it's we have six resident assistants located in the building. Again, they're there to build community and support you, connect you to resources as needed. And all of the rooms in Xavier are double occupancy rooms. So there are no triple pluses, they're all doubles. And that's what Xavier is comprised of. A couple of other things located in or near Xavier Hall. The Center for Global Education is just off of the lobby. Uh, we do have some classrooms that are used for classes during the academic year located off of the first floor and also into the basement. So you may have a class in the same building that you live in, which is kind of cool. Um, but if you don't live here, you'll also have the ability to go in and kind of check out the the residence hall in that sense, in the basement or wherever your classroom may be. The campus bookstore is adjacent to Vi Hilbert. So this is the closest on-campus residence hall to the bookstore. Um, uh, it is located in Vi Hilbert. So for those of you who have come on an admissions tour or a tour campus, uh, the, res the, res the building is Vi Hilbert, which is literally right next to Xavier Hall. And then adjacent to that is student support service, student support offices, like the financial aid office, student financial services, and other administrative offices in by Hilbert, which is again right next to Xavier. Then moving on forward, again, same picture here, standard double. And moving on. So uh, we recognize that not all of our first year students have been placed or assigned to Bellarmine Campion or Xavier. We also recognize that some of you may be new transfer students who are not freshmen. So we also wanted to. We also wanted to give a quick glimpse of the other residence halls that are primarily for upperclassmen or continuing students with the understanding that you may have been placed here due to being a transfer or, um, or a student who is older as a first time freshman. So uh, Chardon Hall and the Murphy Apartments is what we'll be covering now. So Chardon Hall is located on the South Campus area of campus. It is next to Campion Hall, so that kind of gives you a relative idea of where it's located. Uh, it's off located right off of Cherry Street and right next to SU Park. So the track field, soccer field, all of that's just right there. Um, it's home to mostly all, it's home to all second year students. So it's a primarily sophomore community with some sophomore transfers or maybe freshman transfers who are entering into their second year technically. Um, so if you're a freshman transfer and you've been assigned there, that's why. Uh, there are four resident assistants and they're all suite style. Uh, and what suite style is, is if you can picture it with this image here, it's one big room, but you enter at the entrance and there's a wall right in front of you that will split the big suite into two separate sections. So technically you are living with three other people. It's a four bedroom occupancy style suite, um, but you do technically have that wall divider that splits two of you up to one side of the room and two of you to the other side. Each person still gets the same amount of furniture, uh, a closet, armoire, desk, dresser, bed. And inside of the Chardon Suites, there is a bathroom, toilet, shower combination that is shared amongst the four individuals in a Chardon Suite. Uh, located in or near Chardon, the Murphy Parking Garage is located right next to Chardon. Uh, the Japanese Tea Garden, which is pretty cool, is right behind Chardon as well to kind of hang out. It's a nice place, especially if it's nice outdoors. And then again, it's close to Campion Hall and its amenities. So the cave, our main office, other things located in Campion. 
Moving on, we have the Murphy Apartments. It's located off of located on South Campus. It's home mostly to upperclassmen, so junior, senior standing students with a handful of sophomores. There are five resident assistants and there are multiple different apartment styles that are located on within the complex. We have studio singles, we have shared studios, we have one bedroom apartments, townhouses, quads. So for most of you, uh, you are not placed here, but moving on after your first year, this may be an option for you as a sophomore, junior, senior, standing student. So this gives you a preview of what to look forward to in the next year or two. And then located in or near Murphy, we have obviously the parking garage. It's our main parking garage for our residents who are eligible for a parking permit. And students, the student center is also available via the sky bridge that takes you right over Cherry Street. So you don't even have to cross the street if you don't want to. All right, so hopefully that gave you a quick overview. Again, all of this information and more, it's all located on our website. So if you just go to Housing and Residence Life at the, on the Seattle University site, each building has its own hyperlink. Also, if you refer to the email that was sent to you all on July 27th that outlined your housing assignment under the section about mail and packages, the hyperlinks are also there as well to give you an overview and more information of the building. All right, and we're now going to move on to section two. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what we provide in a room. Okay, so some of the things that are in each residence hall. So every one of our buildings has at least a 24 hour study area. And so that comes with individual and community study spaces, along with um, usually a computer lab, at least for Bellarmine Campion, Xavier and Chardin, there's also a computer lab uh, that's available. We also have printing stations throughout campus and we have them in our residence halls too, because the university has a, a university print queue. So if you do have a class where you have to print things, um, you can just send it to the print queue and you can print it off at whatever one is most convenient, whether that's in the residence hall or in the building right next to uh, your classrooms. So we also have floor lounges and other lounge space in each of our buildings. So for example, Campion has a lounge on every single floor as does Bellarmine. Campions also have a kitchen on each of those floors, whereas Bellarmine has one that's in the basement. Um, but we have various lounges and then Xavier has a large lobby lounge area along with a basement um, lounge which is also where their demonstration kitchen uh, is provided for our residents. So we have study areas, social spaces, and community kitchens uh, available for our students. We also have washers and dryers in all of our buildings. And depending on the building that you're in, in Camping and Bellarmine, they're on each floor or they're on the in the basement. In Murphy, they're in, inside just one of the buildings, but everybody has access to that. And then in Chardin and Xavier, they're on the different floors. So they tend to be smaller, but then they're kind of available for each floor. So we also have vending machines. And then we also have ethernet and Wi-Fi throughout campus. You, typically you'll use the ethernet, the direct connection when you're in your room. Um, that's always going to be a little bit faster than the Wi-Fi, but our Wi-Fi, it's, it's pretty stable and it's across all of our campus. So that's available. So if you do have the chance, get a computer that has both options or at least a connection for the Ethernet. So our rooms, most of our rooms have twin XL beds. Xavier, not all of the beds are XL, that, that, and that's really about that much difference in terms of the length. But we would encourage everyone to get XL sheets because they will fit on those beds. And um, as you move through the system, you'll definitely have um, an XL bed at some point. We have modular closets except for Murphy that has regular closets built in and Chardin has built in closets. But for Bellarmine, Campion, Xavier, all of the furniture is, is movable. So that's the closets, the desks, the beds, they're all movable. We have bulletin boards, bookshelf space, we have sink, and we have sinks in all of our rooms. So you do not need to um, uh, uh, go down the hallway to brush your teeth. So we have a sink in every room, along with the micro fridge that we have in all of the rooms. So you shouldn't bring your own because we already provide it for you. 
Okay. Am I doing the what, what you provide? Nope. That's my turn. Okay, Katie. <laughs> All right. So uh, Tim talked us through what we as a university provide for you, some of your basic amenities. And now we're going to talk a little bit about what you, the student, provides. As soon as I get to, there we go. All right. So among the things that you would provide as a student, um, hopefully none of this comes as, as a surprise, but things like your sheets, your blankets, your clothes, things that you would sleep with, you're going to bring your own. And so we'd like to make sure that you know that what size our mattresses are, for example, so that you can make sure you're bringing the proper sheets. Um, I know for our international students in particular, and I may defer to Tim to fully explain this one, um, if you need to borrow linens, that is an option. Um, but most students will bring their own sheets. Um, for the bath, so in Bellarmine, Xavier, and Campion, there are communal bathrooms, meaning that there's also uh, community showers, meaning that um, everyone shares X amount of showers. Um, and so you will want to bring things such as a shower caddy so that you can bring your materials from your room to the shower, wash up, and then bring it back to your room. It's not listed here, um, but I also recommend shower shoes just to keep your, um, if you try to think of it. Um, keep your feet off the shower floor if that's a preference for you. I know for me, I don't like the texture of the shower tile, so something for you to be aware of. Clothing care. So we talked a bit about laundry um, and how each residence hall has its own laundry facility, and you will have to provide your own detergent um, as well as your own hangers, anything that your clothing will need. Um, I don't think we have irons either. Don't think we do. Um, food. So if you are living on campus, particularly as a first year, you are required to have some type of meal plan, whether that be the residential meal plan, the restricted type A, type B. Um, and so you will be able to get food in um, our dining facility in the student center. It's called Cherry Street or C Street. Um, but if you like to have food in your room or if you take food from C Street and bring it back, you're going to want to have your own cups and plates and utensils. Um, tech. We talked a bit about uh, laptops, headphones, surge protectors, um, and while a lot of equipment can be borrowed from the library, we do recommend that students have their own equipment as well, and Tim talked about um, the internet connection we have as well as the ethernet. Um, extras. So anything that you want to make your, your home home, um, things like if you want like an extra fan, like I you know I recommend a, uh, a box fan on the upper floors of Campion when it gets toasty in the summers. Um, if you want to hang posters, take bring some wall putty. It's sort of like, a, if you're not familiar with wall putty, it's sort of like a little um, tacky substance you can put on the walls. It doesn't damage them. It's great. Um, any medicines, desk lamps, anything that you may need. So you may be looking at this list and thinking, okay, so that's what I should be bringing. What shouldn't I be bringing? That's what we're going to talk about next. So of the things that you should not be bringing, um, I have a few items listed here, but this is not a comprehensive list. Things like candles, toaster ovens, microwaves, string lamps, oil lamps. Um, you may notice that the commonality between a lot of these is that they have exposed heating elements, or in the case of candles, just a fire. And the reason why we don't permit those is because of the fire safety risk. We, um, with an open flame or exposed heating elements, we run the risk of students getting burned, items getting set on fire, um, and we don't want to run that risk. And, um, and oh, so, sorry, I keep losing my train of thought. For string lights, that one may come as a surprise, but the reason there has everything to do with the heat that they can produce because it damages the paint on the walls. Microwaves and mini fridges are on there. You're thinking, well, what's the problem with those? It's because we already provide one for you. Um, and so since all the rooms already come with the microwave, we ask that you don't bring another one. Um, but of course, this is not a comprehensive list. And so you may be wondering, well, what about this? What about this thing? If you're not sure if it can be brought to campus, check the resident handbook. It's on page 31 where we, where we talk about what you can and can't bring. Um, the bottom line for most items is, does it have an exposed heating element, uh, say for example, like a toaster, um, or is it over a certain amount of watts? Uh, we prefer low wattage equipment because it reduces the risk of electric shock. So for those of you who like charts, like me, um, you here we have a chart for what to pack. And we have it broken it down based on what you need to have, what's nice to have, some little extras if you so choose, and things that you should be leaving at home. 
Um, the URL up here is a more comprehensive um, uh, web page that talks really talks through each of these things and things that you'll want to consider as you're coming to campus. Um, but by and large, everything you see on here, we've already touched on to some extent. Um, I may point out some of, uh, let's see here, ah, shower shoes is on there. I was going to point out the need to have, definitely recommend shower shoes, not a requirement. I just recommend them. Um, little things like a coffee maker, you can bring a water kettle. I know I brought one when I went to undergrad, um, water kettle, kettle life-saving. But of course, things to leave at home that we already talked about quite a bit. Um, things that have exposed heating elements, toaster ovens. I get asked about air fryers all the time. And unfortunately, you can't bring those either. Um, a couple things to note that every so often it comes up, um, bed risers. Uh, unfortunately, we do not permit bed risers. Um, if you are looking for a different, um, if you're looking to loft your bed, um, then we can work with facilities or you can work with facilities to have your bed lofted. So that is higher to make for under bed storage. And now I'm gonna pass it over to Michael. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, sorry, it's a few minutes late. My name is Michael Palacios. I use he, him pronouns. Um, I serve as the Associate Director for Community Engagement and Learning Initiatives within Housing and Residence Life. Um, and excited to share some tips for you all as you start preparing for moving. Perfect. So here are some tips that we have uh, for you all as you prepare for move-in that will happen in September. Um, so the first thing is that make sure that you are here at your residence halls ready to check in at your appointment time. Uh, make sure you're following directions from staff and any signs that are out as uh, some of the check-in uh, sites may not be the actual front desk of a building, but will be very close. So just make sure you listen to staff and what they have to say. Another great thing about living on campus is the staff that we have available to you all. One of those being the resident assistants, which are students here at Seattle University that will live on the floor and hall with you. Um, so make sure you get to know them. Um, you will see them around during move-in or as the nights and the weekends go on, just stop by, by their room, say hi. Most of them will be in their rooms, doors open, ready to support, help and assist you as needed. Uh, make sure you attend your floor meetings and orientation sessions uh, that are going to be happening after move-in uh, starting that Saturday. Uh, and then also make sure you familiarize yourself with our resident handbook. Uh, this is something that can be found on our university housing website. Um, our resident handbook are all of our rules, policies, and procedures that you agree to follow whenever living on campus with us. Um, if you haven't done so already, get to know your roommate, take some time to uh, get to know them during the welcome time and move-in time, coordinate move-in stuff, so who, when are you both moving in to make sure that, you know, you're both available there to meet each other, um, and making sure that you know who's bringing what is very important as well, too. Making sure you're taking some time to get to know others in your building. A lot of people are going to be moving in. They're going to be excited. It's going to be a fun, high energy time. And they want to get to know people. And I'm sure many of you here want to get to know them as well, too. So make sure you take time to reach out to those that you see around with their doors open, say hi, get to know people during your orientation sessions and things like that to start building those connections uh, that will most likely last for a while while you're here at Seattle U. Ask questions. So again, as I said, we have RAs, we have ACs like Katie, we have grad students who are also in the building as well too. So we have lots of staff who are here to support you all, whether it's in housing and residence life or in general, you have orientation leaders, um, you have other full-time staff members and student leaders on campus that are all gonna be here ready to welcome you all when it comes time to move in and the start of classes. So make sure you ask questions, get to know um, campus a little bit better and maybe learn where your classes are as well too so you know where you have to go from where you're living to how to get to class. Um, we will have various pop-up stores um, from our campus bookstore around campus. Uh, make sure uh, you take some time to get to know them to get your SU gear. For those of you that are coming from a far distance as well too, know that they will have some supplies that you can purchase so you don't have to bring everything when you're flying over or making the long drive to Seattle. Um, it's a great place to stop and see kind of those last minute things you may need. Um, fall welcome events. There will be lots of events happening uh, starting that Saturday that you should participate in. Your RAs are going to know about them as well, too. Your orientation leaders will know about them. So make sure you ask about them, get to know where they are, take a group of your new friends, do whatever it is, but participate in those fall welcome events to get connected and get to know people while you're here at CLU. 
And then in that, make sure you get involved. Uh, we have hall council, which is kind of like if you ever did student government, you were in high school, uh, that's very much what hall council is like in our residence hall association. They're like the student government for everyone who lives on campus. So get involved in those. Um, and one of our ACs, Devin, is uh, the advisor for that as well too. And so make sure you interact with them. They'll be around at move-in. So see, find their little table, ask them questions. They may have some giveaways for people who stop by and say hi and ask some questions as well too. Um, so feel free to say, say hi. And then the last thing is make sure you have fun. We know it's going to be a stressful time. We know it's going to be a fun time. It's going to be exciting. Um, there may be some tears uh, at certain times throughout the day, but have fun. Um, it's a very exciting time. You're starting off your journey here with us at Seattle University. Get to know your friends, your staff, and things like that. But we're hoping to make it as fun as possible. We are hoping that we can send all the good vibes to get the best weather possible for you all during move-in. But it's going to be a fun time. So just enjoy it, take it all in, and have fun. So it looks like we're going to move to questions. Yeah, so um, I know that there are a couple of questions in the queue right now, but uh, we will work to kind of pick and choose the ones that haven't been answered yet. But please feel, feel free to be empowered and feel comfortable unmuting yourself and asking any questions that you might have. Uh, we always like to say that if you have that, if you have a question, there's at least one other person that might have that same question in the group. So feel free to open it, open it up here. Also, Caitlin will be here to give the student perspective on some of the questions you may have. So we're happy to we're happy to come at these at all different angles. So I'm going to actually jump in because I saw a few questions that kind of came up. So uh, an amenity that we didn't really talk too much about today is we have our service desks or our front desks at all our residence halls. Um, and so some of the, the equipment that you can get um, at your front desk are, if you look on this picture that we have, you can see those carts. So we have lots of those carts and those are available to help you when you're moving in or at the end of the year when you're moving out or if you just get a whole bunch of packages from home. Um, but at that service desk, that's where you'll also be able to get your packages. So if you do send packages ahead of time, although we ask that you don't do it until you know you start sending it about 10 days before you arrive so that we don't have a flood of thousands of packages for a month, but uh, you may pick up your packages at the front desk. And then other things that you can check out at the front desk will include like if you get locked out, there's a, you can get a spare key into your room. Now, you should only hold that for a few minutes and bring it back, but uh, we can do that. We also have vacuums at our front desks. And then different desks will have different, they you often have games and other equipment that you may check out um, to, to use that will assist you in building community in, in, your, uh, in your community. So that's just a little bit about that. So. Um, Okay, um, let's see if somebody wants to be sort of masters of ceremony. So let's talk about trash. Um, I'll take this one. <laughs> or Caitlin, did you want to take that one? Um, well, I have a couple of things about trash. But so uh, my recommendation about trash is you have trash rooms on every floor. But one thing that they don't tell you is during move in and move out, your trash room is the basement. So you'll be going down those elevators to put your trash in the basement. And then after move in, they will also open up the, all the trash rooms so then you don't have to go to the basement. It's just those two times if I'm correct, right? Yes, that is correct. And we do that because uh, uh, if we don't, that's all our custodial will do for about three days is um, do mostly recycling. But we do have tr uh, trash rooms slash recycle rooms on our all our floors. So that will include, you can put your trash there, we'll have recycling there, um, and that's mixed recycling. And then we also have composting for your food waste um, that you um, can use. And those are available and they get cleaned out daily. Um, for our students. And then we also forgot to mention we have great custodial and maintenance in our residence halls. And they go through and actually either clean or sanitize the restrooms multiple times per day uh, to keep that as healthy of an environment for you as they can. And then typically they will respond to work orders 
uh, within one to two business days. If it's an emergency, obviously they can come out um, at, at different times to do that um, with the exception of bunk beds. So if you wanna bunk your bed ahead of time, if you and your roommate have asked about that, you can actually put that work request in now um, because they'd love to get ahead of that because sometimes it can take them, they'll get about four to 500 requests for either bunking or raising the bed. I tend to not say lofting because we're talking about about 30 inches. Uh, but uh, if you want your bed raised up, um, if you have it as a bunk bed, there's still some space underneath the bed um, and it's about six to eight inches depending on the specific bed. All right, I'm gonna take a couple of questions here. So uh, there's one about how do we see our meal plan? There's a couple of different ways to do it. You can look at your bill, which has already been released to students and that'll tell you exactly what you signed up for. Or you can open up your application that you submitted back whenever you apply for housing and you'll be able to see on the meal plan page what you selected. Uh, please note that on that page, you won't be able to change it. You have to actually submit a request to change a meal plan, which is under the request tab on the housing portal. But please note that we do have a requirement that all freshmen and sophomores do need to have the residential meal plan at minimum. So you're welcome to go up or you're welcome to go down if you have the maximum or expanded, but we won't be able to go any lower than the residential. Um, I see a question about athletes and being on the baseball team. Um, all of our fresh, all of our new students have already been told about their early arrivals uh, related to their participation in athletics. Uh, if you have not been checking your Seattle University email account, I would encourage you to look at that because that's where all of our communication goes to. If you still haven't gotten anything, that likely means that our office hasn't been um, notified yet of your participation in athletics. So I would encourage you to reach out to housing at seattleu.edu and we'll try to troubleshoot and see what's going on. But all of our early arrival information has already been sent to um, our incoming athletes. And there's another question that I'll take before handing it back to my colleagues about a room change. So if you've submitted a room change, you will only hear back from our office if we're able to process the request. So if you don't hear from us or you have not heard from us yet, that means we have not gotten to your request or we have looked at your request and there's nothing that matches what you're asking us to change you into. So you will only hear back from us if we're able to process your request. The next big milestone, if you will, is on September 1st when room changes are done since we're not taking, we can't take any after the first, you will receive an email on that date saying, unfortunately, it looks like we weren't able to process your room change request, so we're closing your request out. So you'll either get an email from us saying we're able to do it, or you'll get something on the first when the request form closes and we're not able to do it. So if you haven't heard from us, that doesn't necessarily mean we haven't gotten to it yet. It just might mean we haven't, we don't have anything that matches your request. There are a few questions, it seems like, about the layout of the buildings and co-ed, not co-ed, um, and things like that. Um, so for our first years um, living in Campion, Bellarmine, and Xavier, the floors are all co-ed, um, meaning that you could live with anyone on your floor who is gendered. However, given that we do have um, shared bathrooms, they each bathroom is gendered male or female, um, or we do have a single use um, accessible bathroom in Bellarmine for people to use as well too. Um, and so just keep that in mind. Uh, there was another question I saw about, should you stay after move-in? Should you come back the next day? Um, and I would say that's completely your preference. I would highly recommend that you stay after move-in. Uh, move-in day is going to be a very long day because it's kind of all planned out for you with between orientation sessions um, and specific things you need to do with housing. So just keep that in mind. It's like you're more than welcome to go where you want to go. No one is forcing you to stay um, in your room. No one's going to be doing checks at, you know, 1030 at night, knocking at everyone's door to see if you're here. But in order for you to like build that community, make those connections, I would highly suggest that once you move in, you're kind of here, you're staying in your room, you're going to the different events that you have to go to to help get you acclimated to one, living on campus, but then two, getting to know your roommate, your floor mates, getting to interact with those. But yeah, the first night, um, if you participate in like all the social events, which we highly encourage you to do in the, that go into the evening, your evening's gonna end probably around like 10, 10.30. 
um, after all the social events. And so if you're leaving after that, then coming back the next day around like nine, 10 in the morning to do more of the events, that's just a lot of traveling. So would highly, highly suggest um, that you do stay after you move in. Uh, but again, no one is going to be checking in on you or anything like that. And I'll take the next one. Um, Sarah, thank you so much for your question. It's actually a great question that we tend to get year to year. Uh, we, as in Housing and Residence Life, we do not collect housing or meal plan payments separately from the rest of tuition and fees to Seattle University. So your housing and meal plan charges are gonna be on your fall tuition invoice as well as winter and spring once those quarters get here. So you'll be paying housing and meal plan charges just like you would be paying for tuition and fees to Seattle University. Um, and in terms of financial aid or any other aid that is credited to your account, um, we would recommend reaching out to Student Financial Services so they can have that holistic 30,000 foot view of your tuition bill and they can kind of help you understand what that looks like. But you won't be, you won't be submitting a payment to our department, it's Seattle U when you pay tuition. Tyler, we also had a question about international early arrival. Yeah, so if you're a new international student, so a new freshman or transfer or even exchange student for this upcoming quarter, that uh, move-in day is going to be September 13th, which is Tuesday. That is the earliest you'll be able to arrive. Uh, you should have already received your early arrival notification um, for that reason. If you are an international student, so please refer back to the email you were sent um, related to your arrival to campus, the time frame of when you need to arrive to check in. Make sure you do arrive when the desk is open because we won't be able to check you in otherwise. But all international students are approved to move in on September 13th, no earlier than that. So when do returning students move in? They can start moving in on the Sunday after. So I believe that's the 18th. So they wouldn't move in until then. Um, so that's just when they can come. So then there's one more question. It says, my roommate is not responding on email. What should I do? I would keep up trying to contact them. Keep in mind, you know, some people are on vacation. Um, some people may not be quite used to using their SU email account yet. Um, and, and that happens. You know, I wouldn't necessarily hold it against them. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're ignoring you or anything like that. They just may not be using it yet or they couldn't be on vacation. So give them a little bit of time. Um, we're definitely happy to work with you, help you. But Caitlin, do you have any um, advice on that? Um, well, let's see. A lot of people when they're on vacation, they don't put like notices saying they're on vacation. So just assume if it's summer and they're not checking, they're usually on vacation. Though we've been telling students about five times this summer, 20 times to check their emails from the orientation office specifically. So they should hopefully be re receiving those notifications via our Discord to check their email so they should see it. But usually that just means they're on vacation. So I would recommend keep trying, but if they don't respond for a month, maybe need to reach out to housing. I might also, I'll jump in there. I'm thinking about back when I was a freshman and I was definitely that person that didn't even log into my Seattle U email until like August. Um, and so for those of you out there who were like me, it's possible that they just haven't seen it. Trying to look through to see if there's anything we missed. Um, I think we got most things, unless there is a question um, that anybody has that's out there that did not get answered yet. I see one um, about the showers and uh, bathrooms having changing rooms. To the best of my knowledge, they do not. No, they do. Oh, they, they don't. Do. Yeah, so all of our things that you get like a little room that's for changing and then a little area for your shower. Oh, um, so they're combined. Those are separate. Yep. Yeah, it's combined, but they have separate curtains. And so there's, so that way when you're in the shower, it's two uh, curtains uh, between you and um, uh, the rest of the restroom. I'm so glad you took that one. I definitely <laughs> saw them as the same unit. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, and recommend oh, go ahead, for showers is I I cheated. I actually just wore my robe to the showers because there's not enough room to change, as I've discovered. And then each shower is separate from the net one next to it. So we don't have sort of like the group showers. Each shower is its own private space from the shower next to it. Um, and that's the same with the uh, bathroom stalls too. Um, so, um, uh, you know, that's just sort of how that works. Um, so it's it's a little more privacy than at some places. Okay, so one says your move appointment is only 15 minutes. So what does that mean? So the move and point appointments on the Saturday are scheduled to be about 15 minutes. Then now what's going to also happen on that day is we'll have lots of people with cards, lots of volunteers helping you. Um, the idea of putting them at about 15 minutes doesn't mean everybody takes exactly 15 minutes. In fact, a lot of people will actually take less than that because you'll pull up in, in a car, um, will help you unload. So our volunteers will be there to help you on that Saturday. And then they'll, the volunteers will start going up towards your room while you quickly check in and you'll get your ID. And then you'll also get your room keys. And then you'll go up and you'll get in line with them and you'll go up. And so hopefully we'll have enough volunteers at any given time to really help you so that it's one trip up to the room. Then they'll help you unload. That doesn't mean you have to unpack, but it's really the time we're estimating that hopefully it takes you to get from the car up into your room. And then whoever's driving the car will actually repark it while you get in line to get your keys um, so that we can get the next uh, person up and get trying to get them up to their room. I'll take the um, question about booking a move-in appointment for the 13th. So for those of you who have been approved for um, an early arrival due to either being an international student or needing to be here physically present on campus for some sort of commitment, either academic or extracurricular. Uh, a, a, an email has been sent or will be sent depending on when you submit your request, which by the way, they're due on Friday, um, about your early arrival process and arrival to campus. You don't have to choose a move-in appointment because our communication outward is that you have a window of time to show up and check in. So please make sure you're paying attention to that email because it does talk specifically about your arrival to campus. And it also specifically says that you don't have to choose a move-in appointment because we have this window of time. So just focus more on that. And actually, I think if you try to access the portal, you shouldn't be able to even choose an appointment um, and that's on purpose. So just refer back to our, our communication if you are approved to move in early. Um, I think there was also another one about the uh, my student is moving in early. Do we drop stuff off or not be able to keep going? So if you're moving in early again and you have family or supporters there to help you, uh, you'll be able to check in at your respective residence hall front desk. If you're moving in on the ninth or later, if you're moving in before, there's a special check-in process that you'll have to you'll have to go through, and our communication mentions that. Um, regardless, you'll go to a front desk and pick up your key. At that point, you're able to access your room and move in all your stuff as much as possible. Uh, your family, if they're there, family, friends, supporters, if they're there to help you, after you go to your commitment on campus, they're welcome to still be here to help you move in afterwards or be with you in space for an hour or so. Um, so yes, you're still able to be with the student, even if they're approved to arrive early. And so there's a couple of questions about string lights. The reason why we don't permit string lights is they are a high source of household fires and also damage. For example, we had some students who had some string lights in um, last year and it burnt their blinds. They had it up by their blinds and you can actually see the burn in the, the blinds. So we had to replace them. So the yeah, so the main reason we do that is just it's a fire hazard and we want to make sure our students are safe. Are the rooms centrally heated or something? Yes, um, we do have central heat throughout the buildings um, and you can do some adjusting when the heat is on in your room to be up or down. Um, you know, so hopefully you wanna try to turn it down 
if it's still too hot, you can also open up your windows, um, but we have uh, central heat throughout the building. So we would prefer that you don't bring decorating lights. <laughs> I guess that might be the way. So with the string lights, and then again, the main reason is most of those things are not UL rated um, and they are a higher source of household fire. Um, so you're happy to bring decorations, um, you know, but um, I know people love to have the lights, but they do cause more fire and damage. So we really don't want them in the buildings because of the safety factor. Do we have a specific time guests have to leave during the week? Does somebody want to talk about um, guest guest policies? Or am I taking that? <laughs> I guess I will talk about it. Um, so we do have times that we ask now, we have a couple different things in our residence halls. So one, we have courtesy hours. So what that means is 24 hours a day, um, even if you have a guest in the room, you know, but we do ask that people keep the it, it quieter in the building so other students can sleep and study anytime. Um, but for visitors in your room specifically, and I'm going to have to go look it up because I don't remember it off the top of my head. Katie, I don't know if you remember because you're probably a little closer to that. Um, Katie, you want to jump in? <laughs> yeah, I'm reading a few of the, the guest policies. So um, as far as guest policies go, there isn't necessarily your guests must be gone by this time at night. However, there are um, restrictions for overnight guests. Um, and that's, Tim, I'm in the same boat as you, is I would need to look up how many nights in a row a guest can stay over. Um, three, thank you. Uh, a guest can stay overnight for up to three nights consecutively and no more than nine nights throughout the month if memory serves. There is also restrictions on gender. Um, and so student, um, if you are a student and you have a guest of a different gender, they cannot stay the night. Um, and I believe the manual also stipulates that if your guest is of the same gender, um, then they can stay the night per, uh, provided they are not in an amorous relationship with one another. Um, and so to go over to the question, are there any regulations for visitors? Um, like if your family or friends from other schools want to visit or hang out, uh, you are responsible for your guest behavior. So if you have a friend who's visiting from another school, they can visit you, but you have to stay with them. They can't go off on their own and you are responsible for their behavior. I hope that covered everything. I'm actually reading through... Um... The resident handbook right now because i know we actually have some more specific but if you do go to the resident handbook because we do actually have a time in our residence halls where we do ask guests to leave and i believe it's 2 a.m at the latest michael it's 1 a.m sunday through thursday and then 2 a.m friday through saturday so if anyone's staying after 1 a.m Sunday through Thursday, that is considered an overnight guest or someone who is staying the night with you. And then Friday through Saturday, 2 a.m. is considered an overnight guest. And so that, as Katie has shared, if you have an overnight guest, it must be someone of a diff or the same gender or it cannot be someone that you're in a relationship with. And so um, if you do just Google our resident handbook, it's all in there. It's a lot longer than what I just posted. So please make sure you go through it. The big thing to note with guests is that it has to be an agreement between you and your roommate or roommates. So you can't just have guests to have guests. It is a conversation that you should be having with your roommate um, um, very early on, I would say, about what your um, expectations are with guests because your roommate may say, hey, I have an 8 a.m. class on Thursdays. So on Wednesdays, I don't want anyone here past 10 o'clock type of thing. And so make sure you have that conversation with your roommate if you want to have guests. Um, it's completely fine for you to have guests, but just, yeah, you should be having that uh, communication with your um, your roommate. And the last thing I'll add about guests is that you are responsible for informing all of your guests about our policies and procedures. So uh, let's say uh, I'm bringing my guest, Tyler. We were we went to high school together. Tyler wants to come visit. Great. Tyler decides to break the policies. I can still be held responsible for that uh, because it is my responsibility to inform Tyler of all of our policies. So just please keep that in mind and making sure that you are reading through our um, handbook to make sure that you uh, understand uh, th our thing. Right. Um, when it comes to campus apartments, um, those are still under our resident handbook. Um, if they are SU uh, apartments, um, I believe including by Hilbert and Douglas as well too. Um, and so please make sure you understand our resident handbook because policies are the same for all students who live on campus. 
And just for the just for a quick time check uh, to be respectful of everyone's time, it looks like we have about three minutes left. So feel free to continue to put questions in and we'll answer up to when we can. But if we're not able to answer any questions past 2 p.m., feel free to email us and I will put that information in the chat. Okay, are there any other questions? Are, is there a curfew for when students have to be in their room? No, there is not a cur there there is not a curfew. We do have courtesy hours and quiet hours, which we kind of referred to before. Um, and the courtesy hours are really it's 24 hours a day. Other students should always be able to sleep and study. You know, although in the middle of the day, we expect they'll be kind of a little bit more noise than what you'd have um, late at night. And then quiet hours go in effect when we expect it to be very quiet so that other students may get their sleep and prepare for class the next day. Um, you know, so that's just a little bit about um, um, that. And then is it difficult to walk to class during snowy or rainy weather? Um, I'll let Caitlin answer that, but I will say for myself, who does walk across campus with those, I do it all the time, especially with rain. You know, we have rain here. Our rain is typically not as heavy as you may have in some places. It's just more frequent. Snow is rare, but it does happen. <laughs> Snow's rare. It melts in like 24 hours. That happened last year. There shouldn't be an issue. <laughs> you just shouldn't need to even need a, you just need a rain jacket, honestly, and you're fine. Don't bring mittens or hats, maybe, because I'm not sure you have enough room for them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you should make sure as you're packing, don't bring everything that you own, but make sure you do have at least a winter coat. Make sure, you know, you have that rain jacket or an umbrella, whichever you prefer, um, uh, you know, having having those things, but you don't necessarily need four or five jackets, um, you know, because you're just not going to have the space for it. Yeah, I see I see a comment in the chat about like, hey, if you're from the Midwest, uh, how we view rain, I'll speak to my folks who may be coming in from the Southwest, where we have a whole season dedicated to monsoons, you're not going to get that here. The The sky, for the most part, is kind of mists at you and kind of sprinkles a little bit, but it, it, it's annoying if you wear glasses, but you just need a hood and you'll be okay. Yeah, I um, I moved here from San Francisco. I don't know if any of you are coming from the Bay Area, but I moved here from there and um, I pretty much got, I do pretty well with just like a North Face jacket with a hood. Um, you'll be, I think you'll be, you'll be fine with that, but that's pretty much the extent of, it rains here, yes it does, but it's not like heavy, heavy downpour every single day. It, it adjusts here and there, so. Well, it looks like we are at time um, and it is two o'clock. So I think as has been posted in the chat a few times, if you have additional questions or things that you didn't get answered or as you're starting to pack and things like that, and you have questions, uh, feel free to email us at housing at seattleu.edu or you can also give us a call at 206-296-6305. Please know that if you call us, we are only open during business hours, which university business hours are 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. We are closed during the lunch hour from 12 to one, and we are closed when there are any university holidays um, that uh, may coincide with that. So just note that if you leave a voicemail though, um, one of our team members will get back to you as soon as we can. So thank you all so much for coming and uh, learning more about the move-in process and what to pack. And we are so excited to welcome you all on September 17th. Bye-bye everyone. Bye, thanks for coming.